Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2 IC, and if you stopped into this video, thank you for coming. So, uh, real quick, before I get into this, I'm going to, and I'll step over here, which, real quick, before I get into that one, I'm going to break up another one. Uh, I had a few of you guys make me some suggestions. The first one was about the music on the uh, in and out of the video saying that it was blasting. I think I fixed that. So if I fix that, let me know down in the comments. The second one is a few of you have said, hey, when you're in there doing these things, it's really dark. So ta-da, light. Does that help? Is that better? Are we fixing it? All right, problem solvers. Next one is going to be, I've still got that poll up. I'm still going to let it go for a couple of days and see and let everybody get a chance to get in there. But I think what we're going to do is, let me put the picture right out here. I think we're going to test out Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. So this Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we're going to do Workshop Wednesday. And we're just going to do a 45 minute to an hour live Q&A, just like we did the, on Sunday, I believe. Monday, one of the two. Um, but, so if you can make it, great. Uh, if you can't, let me know in the comments if there's a better day. Maybe we can work something out and switch some things around. But right now, we're going to test out Wednesday. Wednesday. So this Wednesday coming up at 9 p.m. is the Row Report Workshop Wednesday. So hopefully I can see you guys there. Now, uh, another one is going to be make sure you go check out the Christmas giveaway video so you can see all the stuff and the package prizes and all that. So I want one of you guys to win it. Uh, probably maybe next week -ish, I should release all the details and all that. So give me a little bit of time. I'm working on some more stuff. Plus I am waiting on another thing or two to come in. So, uh, there's that. Now I got a little bit of a list. Stick with me. We're going to jump right into this one. So first Iraq has put up calls to close the U S embassy by saying all political solutions are useless. The only way left is a military operation against the U.S. Embassy and its bases. Now, that's kind of concerning right there, you know. We kind of need that, that base over in that area in Iraq and Syria and things like that. So if you're starting to get some of these Iraqis turning a little bit and going a little bit against us, that really takes a lot of the strategic, you know, uh, uh, G, the geopolitical and the geography of everything it changes the landscape of everything so that's an important one to keep an eye on remember data points that's what we're doing here now next and i don't know why north korea keeps popping up they just they always just want to be in the news but uh north korea released a statement today saying that the military alliance between the u.s japan and south the south korea could trigger world war three now that's interesting they have a lot to say, and they're doing some really weird stuff, which, to be fair, they always want the limelight, and they always do really weird, shady stuff anyway. So uh, this doesn't kind of go out of their norm, but they're really posturing. Now, remember, they're kind of, in my opinion, they're kind of a proxy to China. So it's one of those ones, you know, of like how Iran is not quite, you know, that really huge superpower, but they can disrupt a lot. They're, they're you know, Iran versus a, a little tiny group of people or, or whatever you want to call them. Um, they go in and they do little tiny things, you know, and I don't want to make it sound like it's insignificant, but they go in and they just, they're, they're kind of that thorn. They're the, you know, take out a building, they disrupt, they do some things. Now you get somebody like Iran or North Korea now it's an attention getter because now they have the big boy toys. You know, they can do some real, real damage, death, and destruction. So they're kind of that proxy. So it's going to be interesting to see. Is this just going to continue how you know, North Korea always is? Or are we going to start getting an uptick? You know, data point. Now, I'm going to show you a series of three pictures. Now, on any of these, I'm going to kind of talk a little fast because I want to make a short video. Feel free to pause so you can read them all. And actually, you know what? Instead of putting them here, I'm just going to put it over my face. So you don't need to see me. Just focus on here. So first picture. We're going to talk about hypersonics. 
Now, because these are real true game changers. Now, the top three is Russia, who has completed successfully two launches of hypersonics. One is included from the one that they just did in October from the submarine. Now, second is going to be the U.S., which successfully launched one scramjet in September. And third is China, who successfully um, launched one there. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that one here in a minute. So, now, let me put up picture number two. So, in this picture, it's going to give you the visuals to compare the top three countries that I just mentioned there in the categories of soldiers, aircraft, tanks, warships, and nukes. Now, while you're looking at that, notice the bottom line. So you have nukes there. So the U.S. has 3,750. Russia has 6,400, while China has 350. So, and this is only what's being reported. This isn't a total, you know, actual true, you know, number. This is only what they want you to know. So it could be way more. It could be a little less. We don't know. We're just going off of what, you know, is open source information that they're willing to share. But it's pretty much around the globe. Russia has more than us. And to be honest, you start getting some of these ones where you get alliances made. So Russia and China are cozying up. Iran is cozying up. Pakistan, all this other stuff. They're all nuclear powered. They all start going into it. You start talking about some of these other countries. It's really most of it now, not in all of it, but most of it that there are nukes. We just put them over there. So it really puts us at a disadvantage. Now, keep in mind, though, that when we're talking about full on press the button, everything goes. It doesn't really matter about 10,000. You know, it's not going to take much. You know, I, I think when I watched one of these uh, uh videos somebody did a simulation and it was a very low number i want to say it was less than 50 would almost destroy enough that it would make it to where you know almost new life on the planet would exist so we're talking ten thousand, you know that we know of it, it, that's just doom and gloom let's let's move past that so let's move to the third picture so in this picture it's going to show you the russian arsenal now again feel free to pause it so that way you can go through and read all about this because i think as things get heated up uh, whether that's later this year early next year sometime next year you know somewhere in the future i think you're going to start seeing these names of the things that are on this picture start popping in but let's move on so the U.S. and its NATO allies was served a notice from Russia that it will formally suspend its participation in the 1990 treaty limiting conventional forces in Europe. Now, depending on where you read that one, if you have read that story, uh, it is all over the place. It says Russia is pulling out of it. It says the United States is pulling out of it. It says that Europe is pulling out of it, which makes no sense because it says right there that uh you're going to pull out limiting the forces in europe so i don't know how uh europe can pull out of a treaty that limits european forces in europe I, I, that whole thing everybody tried to put a spin on this and that's why i found this data point to be very interesting now keep in mind earlier this year russia pulled out of the nuclear test treaty so they're pulling out of a lot of things. And this is, for me, this is signaling. So whether anything comes about it, we don't know. But they took a step. They put in some sort of actionable event. They didn't warn. They didn't threaten. They did it. So that's a data point. Keep that in mind. Now, another one that I found interesting was the Palestinian president's convoy was ambushed by a group associated with Hamas and what is being reported as an assassination attempt? 
Now, I have seen all sorts of stuff on this. I've actually seen what is allegedly the video of said ambush. Now, the only thing that I can't find is what happened to the Palestinian president. We don't know his condition, don't know his whereabouts. We, I can't find it anywhere. So if one of you know, let me know. Uh, but so far, I, I can't find it. Now, I'm going to end on this one. And this one's going to be kind of like uh, maybe a little homework for the night, something to think about. So today, the Biden administration put out calls to Israel to ensure a three-day humanitarian pause. Now, that right there is the bending to the um, different groups or whatnot, however you want to put this, that um, is doing all these protests. And currently, as far as I know, uh, at least from the filming of this and probably while you're watching this, there is a really big pro-Palestine march and protest going on in New York right now. And they're all calling for a ceasefire. Now, that is the administration trying to appease its base. Hamas has said that they will not agree to a ceasefire until, or they will not, I'm sorry, let me back that up. Hamas will only agree to release hostages once a ceasefire takes place. So keep that here. Israel replies back saying that they will only do a ceasefire if Hamas releases hostages. Now, keep that in mind right there. That, for me, is brilliant. I'm playing both sides because let's say you and me have this little argument going on and you know joe blow over here or billy bob or whoever just make up a person he's right over there and they come in to try and mediate and they go listen we want you guys to quit and i go i tell you what i will quit if he gives me back you know if you give me back the ball and they turn to you and they go, hey, how about you agree to that? And you go, well, I will do it, but only if um, they walk away, then I'll give them the ball. And I go, no, no, no. You got to give me the ball first, then I'll walk away. And you go, no, you got to walk away first, then I'll release the ball. It, it's, it's this catch-22. We just go around in circles. Well, no, you got to do this or we won't stop. Well, we'll only stop if you do this. And just round and round and round. You see how they're playing both sides. Now, keep in mind, too, as you watch mainstream media, they use words and watch. It, it's very interesting. And I'm sure that I get to see this more than a lot of you because I watch a lot of both sides. I want to see the neutral. I want to see this side. And I want to see this side. And I want to see how they correlate because a lot of times the same story comes out. And you'll see an event happen. So a, a military strike happens. This side over here says, these people were martyred. This side says, hey, this event, same event happened. And they'll come in and we'll go, we successfully took out. Okay, I get it. Now, this side will strike back. And they will say, on this side, they will say, hey, we were attacked. And they just massacred and they went through and they're doing genocide and they're doing all this other stuff and the other side you know they put it in there as uh we did a successful strike you know taking out some targets notice the word play they play to emotions they want to get you emotionally involved and usually what i do when i go through different articles is i read it one just one time through and I look at just those words. I just kind of glance through and I look for those key phrases. I want to see the word genocide. I want to see the word martyred. I want to see, and I want to see who all is using what word. Then I take it out. And I want to see where is the neutral stance in this? Because it's not about the word, it's the event. A military strike happened, and people, you know, were, were loss of life. It's regardless of however you want to put the word in there. You can really make it big or you can push it down. 
The big thing is the event. What actually happened? Not the description of what happened. I don't want to know if it was the biggest thing in your opinion or the smallest thing. What actually happened? And I implore you. Now, Pinball said this. Find the truth. There's people out here. And this, it's kind of sad in a way. Us on YouTube. The way that we share information. The way that we all go in. And do not have a hesitancy. If I say something that you can prove to be wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Please come to me and tell me I'm wrong. I want to know. So that way I can look at it and go, yes, I am wrong, and I can correct it and make sure other people are informed. I have a moral obligation to come in to you and share what I can find to, at the time, at least be factual. Now, hopefully it stays factual because I've already done it, I don't know, at least once or twice where I've come out, I read the story, everything checked out. I said, hey, this happened. And then a day, two, late, two days later, it comes out and it goes, actually, and I go, and I come on here and I got to apologize and go, hey, I messed up. So I will always make that promise to you. If, if something happens, I'll come on and say it. So if you guys find me saying something, let me know, please. Okay, this is a community. I welcome discussion. If you disagree with me, I welcome it. I want to see all sides. I want to see your thought process on everything. You know, it's one of those ones that with all the things going on, there's enough fighting going on. You know, all them people over there, if they want to fight, they're grown adults, they can do what they want. For me, I just want information. I want to know what's going on so that way I can plan and I can prepare for it. I can take that information, pick it apart, see what affects me, and use it. Now, for me, what I find to be interesting and what I feel you guys should know about, I want to share it with you so you can get the information and you can do with it what you, you know, what you want to do. I want to tell you how to think. That's your job. I just want to give you the headlines and I might throw some opinionated, you know, things in there. But I'm not saying, hey, agree with me. I'm saying, hey, this happened. This is what I think about it. If you disagree, that's fine. If, you know, it might, it's, it's something to get your brain working. You're free thinking. You are a free person to go through. And I know I'll get something on that. that well, we're not necessarily free. For right now, we are free people. And so, please, by all means, if I said something great, give me a compliment. I love compliments. If I say something you don't like, disagree with me. You know, all I ask is that you do it in an adult manner so that way... You know, you don't come in and just F-bomb this and, and be rude. That's not the way to go about it. But um, All right, I've taken up too much of your time. Uh, for you, those of you that are new that made it this far, thank you. And every time, just as a fair warning, I know you can't see it right here, right in my fingers. There's a little timer there. Every time that I say I'm going to make a short video, it always goes to like 20 minutes. So just FYI, I don't know why I do it. It's a bad habit. I need to quit. All right more information to come i will see you guys on wednesday for live q a remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together